and take their daughters by force to marry. Let's pray that God will prosper that little that we have, that little oil in our house, in our hands, that God will prosper it, that every work that we do, God will prosper those that are still looking for work and have not found that God will open heaven and connect them to good works and they were able to earn enough to cater for their household, shall we pray? The Father, we pray for every Father, man, pray. every man with platform. We to pray, oh Lord, that every little thing that we find our hands to do to, to do, to do, Lord, you will prosper them, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh Lord God, you know, you will visit us in, in a special way, oh Lord, that people around us will shout, wow, what is it truly that you are doing? Father, we pray that you so bless us that we will be able to meet up all our needs in the household, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, prosper us, oh Lord. Father, God, prosper us, oh Lord. Father, God, prosper us, oh Lord. And open the windows of heaven that there will be no room enough to contain your blessing according to your promise, O oh Lord, in our families, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to pray for the GCK. You know, it's moving to uh, Zambia. And uh, this is a lot of money that the church is going to be needing. If you see what happened at the at the Congress, at the Global Congress, uh, some people were able to complain that when uh, the church know we're not ready, why did we host the program? And if we have faced that pro uh, that uh, place to build with all this money, we are pumping to GCK. You know, by now, that place would have been like five-star hotels, uh, a great congregation, great this and great that. But the church is pursuing that vision that Christ left. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And our Father and the Lord has cast that vision. Now it's going everywhere. Look at all the nation GCK is covering already 200 and something nation, about 219, if I'm not wrong, according to the program we just did. Now we are going to pray that as GCK is moving to Zambia, that God will go ahead of the church, prepare mm -hmm. the land, prepare mm -hmm. the schools, that mm -hmm. the purpose of GCK is that souls will be won. Mm -hmm. that souls will come into the kingdom. Let's pray that God will move ahead of the church to that place, Zambia, and prepare mm -hmm. the man, and that mm -hmm. in this program, that great souls will be won, that more than what we have seen, the area of so harvest that we experience in Zambia, shall we pray? Africa. I mean, Zambia, and the one, one, one. Your mm -hmm. servant, your church, into your hands, we pray as our daddy, the Lord is moving JCK to Zambia, that yeah. your hand will move mightily. You will go ahead of the church and prepare the land and prepare the souls and prepare the nation for yourself, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, God, now we pray that in this program, O oh Lord, that a great miracle of soul harvest will yeah. happen, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, convert great and men in that land of Zambia, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, visit your people, Lord. O oh Lord, God, I will visit your people, Lord. Father God, I will visit your people, Lord. Let there be great harvest of soul in Zambia, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, if we but lift up the name of Christ, God said, I will draw all men to myself. Let us pray that as we know that as pastors, as this case moving to Zambia, we are not shouting, Kumu is coming, Kumu is coming. We are shouting, Christ is coming. Jesus will do wonder. God will do great things. We are lifting up the name of Christ. Let us pray that 
in this program, in this place, oh Lord, that God will draw great and mighty men from the president to the ministers to the governors to the commissioners to the pansets to the local government chairman to the councillors to the ordinary market woman and market man to the ordinary boy and girl in the street that god will draw men and women and boys and girls to itself in this program let's pray that god will move mightily in zambia shall we pray Zambia, then you move mightily, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, you move mightily in the land of yeah, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, we Lord, we pray that you will move in a way that everyone all around the world will shout, Wow. In the name of Jesus, let GCK move and stronger and stronger. Father, in heaven, we pray that your hand will move mightily from the president to the ordinary man of the street. Oh Lord, go in heaven, you will draw them to yourself, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, do wonders in Zambia, Lord. Father God, do wonder, wonder in Zambia, Lord. Father, do wonder all over the world we that we connected online. Oh Lord, go in heaven, we pray that you do wonders among us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, you meet us at the point of our name. O oh Lord, go in heaven, you, you break. My city is the word to the program, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, in Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Matthew, you can take over, sir. We we pray for all the men, especially three of us who are online. Uh, there's something happens after the so Christ have fed them. Then all of the men, the Bible told us that the women were not counted. But after half out of five thousand that uh listening to the message remain only. 12. Among that 12, God still selected three of them, Peter, James, and John, that always stick to mountain. So, uh, whenever is going over, I have to go and pray. And then, when you look at the life of three of us who are online in this morning, uh, how symbolized we are to the prayer online. But I want to, I want, I want you to know, it is not enough. It is not enough. Uh, and as a result of that, we pray for three of us online this morning. The Father, King of Kings, spiritually, materially, financially, titidori and woman, from generation to generation, thing that is unique, Things that is wonderful, thing that is people are saying, things that are very delicious. I like what like delicious. delicious. People always want to use it for word. I use it for a lot of things. Things that are delicious that people will see and they will be coming to Christ in our life. That all limitation on our wife, on our children. On our, on, 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 on our business, that by the power and the all limitation, God should remove to life. this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Open your call upon the name of the Lord. Call Father, upon the name of the Lord. This three, I want to call upon the name of the Lord. Father, I pray us, that us you and as I increase, as believe, we are still those three that are online. I call us, that the that is online, we pray for Father, 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 Let's call upon the name of the Lord for those three leaders. Great thing that be human understanding. You know, this is I know who my God is. I never limited him. All what I'm talking about is that the grace to be able to withstand, to be able to receive, to be able to accept, 
Massive and the Lord God will continue to give to me. In the name of Jesus. I told you there was a damn God told me that the little you walk with me, that's the little you have seen me. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. All what is what is obstacle, we think us a God Almighty God that by the power that God of Jesus Christ should be built in the name of Jesus Christ. As those to be as selected, God gave you the power which have been selected. And you can see the impact of the work of our heart. For the grace God has given to us on all the assignments on the online, all upon the name of the Lord, all the government of limitation, all the government of limitation, initially, spiritually, materially, globally, in your life in my time, that by the power of God, God should remove it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. That God should remove it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. After this morning prayer, there will be testimony. That by the power of God, there will be some testimony. What you have been doing for so long, what you have been doing for so long, a lot of things that they, they will make your life what's happy that we make your husband happy happy but we just take it as a natural I cannot go beyond this let's call upon the name of the Lord all limitation all limitation all limitation the family from generation to generation among our friends on your business on my business by the power of the Lord limitation God in the name
Hello, sir. I can't hear you. Oh, I said let us just share the grace together. Okay. Are you hearing me when we are praying for Sabi? Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let us just share the grace together. Okay. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I want to address all. Let us continue to look at ourselves like Peter, I mean, James, Peter, James, and John. They are separated as a leader. So shall our life be in Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, sir. Up now as we give our titan offering. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. And shaking together. And rolling over. Shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with her, it shall be measured unto you again. So whatsoever you have brought tonight as your tithe and offering, please raise it up as we pray together. Father, we thank you because of this privilege to give. We pray that, Lord, you bless everyone that is giving at this time in Jesus' name. And for those who do not have, we pray that, Lord, you will equally provide for them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name mighty name we pray. You can drop your offering.
was his name all his loved ones went for death had crept into their hearts with pain oh but someone sent a message and soon Jesus did reply and even death could have no power where Jesus passed by. Oh, he always makes a difference when Jesus passes by. The devil trembles, the enemy flees when Jesus comes on the scene. He always shines a ray of light. The darkening
bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I want you to be. Oh Lord, oh Lord, even Joseph Balmore. The war may pass away, the kingdoms may change, I know. Guide my way that I might not go astray. I know I want to lend you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, let your word be my heart. Oh Lord, oh Lord, let me never depart. Forever be my guide, forever on thy side. Pass away, the kingdoms may change. I know. I want me lend you. I know. I want me lend you. I know. I want me lend you. I know. I want me If you be not to 
I'm resting on the finished work of Jesus Christ today. All circumstances will be gone. The word of God will still remain. No sickness, fear, no guilt or sin can have control and worry me. The keys of faith are in my hands and I am bound for victory. A great commission from my Lord I have now received. The Prince of Power of the Air will never have a part in me. His amateur creator, I can change the atmosphere around. I use the chain of circumstance for any spirit to be bound. I am free. and bricks across the globe are echoing the assuredness in the efficacy and power of the Almighty God through the God's chosen vessel, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. No matter what your condition is, mercy is coming to you. The rings and meeting slabs are strong enough to accommodate and remove the suffering, devastation, sickness, poverty, and clogs of sin from the life of whosoever will. If you say, I want forgiveness, he will not say no, because already is the merciful God. This stable, known as the Global Crusade with Kumui GCK, is pitching a gospel tabernacle for a divine encounter in an African country known for scenic sight, Zambia. There are certain rooms you need to be in at certain times to have certain encounters. The door of Zambia is open to divine encounter with the God of all miracles. Starting from Thursday 21st to Tuesday 26th September 2023 at 1600 RGMT daily taking place at the National Heroes Stadium, Zambia. Miracle will launch at your doorstep. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will be shown exceeding limits in the ministry on 22nd, 25th, and 26th September at Molongoshi International Conference Center, Zambia, at 0600 R GMT. Teenagers, campus students, core members, and young adults will be treated to an eye-opening encounter to awaken the sleeping giants in them at the National Heroes Stadium, Zambia, on Saturday, 23rd, September, 2023, at 0600 RGMT. The program shall be transmitted live on satellite, radio, and television. And all those who are online, I want to tell you that the miracle power 
will come from the Alpha location here and get to you right there. The September edition will feature our inspirational songs from choirs across the globe. Why the guest music minister, Jonathan Lee, will lead worship and praise to the Almighty God. It is a moment of divine encounter. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Think about yourself and what you're doing and what the Lord has called you to. You need to understand that this is the best and the highest and the greatest you could do in life. God knew that. He knows what you could be. He knows where you could stretch your hand and stretch your skill, but he has given you a divine call and he has said any other thing you could do. This is the very highest in your life. And I pray that God himself will reveal to you in the revelation that will be indelible that you are in a strategic place at a strategic time and in a strategic generation. The book of Jonah, and I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Now, the watch of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai. The watch of the Lord, that means the mind of God. The message for the hour, the message for the time, and the message, the revelation that... But as we look at the story, you will find that this is the best and the greatest that could have happened to Jonah at that time. And as you look at your life, you will find that where you are, what you're doing, the calling of God in your life is the very best and the greatest that could ever happen in your life. Look at true. It's the word of the Lord to him. Arise, go to Nineveh. Arise, go to Nineveh. The Lord was very specific and very definite as to where he would go. Of course, there were thousands of others the Lord could have called. The Lord could have called this man or that woman, this man or that other individual, but he centered on Jonah. The Lord could have called any other person but you, but he decided that you are the man. He decided you are the woman that he was sent to do a particular thing. What no other person could do at your time or Jonah's time arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. He didn't send an angel, he sent Jonah. He didn't send any other personality or those who have led, like Moses, like Joshua, like Caleb, who were already in heaven, he could have sent them back, but he did not. But he pointed out Jonah. He could have sent an angel, what you are doing now, but doing in ministry, but he called you. And I pray that you will not fail in ministry. You will not disappoint heaven in ministry in Jesus' name. For Jonah, it was his great commission that the Lord had called him to. Look at Jonah chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Now, at this time, whatever he had done in the past, forget about that. Whatever will happen in the future, forget about that. Now, at this time, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, If you sit down, arise. Don't just stay in one place, arise. Don't be too satisfied with what you've done in the past. Where you've been in the past, how you have run errands for the Lord in the past. Arise. Don't look around and say, I think what all I've done and with where I've gone and with the results I got and with the privilege I've had in the past, I think it's time for me now to retire. It's time for me to relax. It's time for me to take some time off. It says, Arise. There is an urgent work to do. Go to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was very far from where Jonah was, and yet the Lord said, Go to that 
Nineveh and God said that great city he knew how great the city was in size he knew great in population great in the many people that were there go in case that and cry against it and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me that was the great commission for Jonah and we have the great commission to the cities where the Lord has sent us to the cities and the people who are there that the Lord has sent us to it says arise and go there and it's a great city cry against it for their wickedness has come before me look at this great commission that is purposeful this revelation that is purposeful and this instruction that is purposeful this calling on the life of Jonah very purposeful the people that get converted because you do it with your volition and with your heart and those people now they sacrifice to the Lord they surrender to the Lord and they're serving the Lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind because you do that voluntarily your reward here will be wonderful your reward in heaven will be great. And when Christ shall come and call his people home, you'll be among the saints, among the servants of God, that will go home for your reward in Jesus' name. Why don't we now stand up and say, Lord, you'll examine your life. Are you a Jonah? Are you carnal? Are you still sick? Or are you backsliding? Are you rebellious? Have you gone away from the calling of God upon your life? Are you running from here to here? Are you running from denomination to denomination? Are you running from church to church? Because there is something God is demanding of you. And you are not surrendering your life. Why don't you say, Lord, can I hide anymore? Everything now I surrender unto you. And the Lord will receive you open your mouth now and pray talk to the Lord let's pray together the pastor has given us the charge that the calling of God is the best the greatest and the highest thing that can happen to anyone in this life therefore we need to pray to God that you will not abuse this privilege you will not misuse it. You will not disuse it, nor refuse it. The privilege to serve God. I want us to call upon God and pray. Also, we need to call upon God that you will not disappoint God in this great assignment of reaching the unsaved as individual unsafe people around us, unsafe people beyond us. Let's call upon God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Also, we have been told that we should not rest on our oars. We should not be satisfied with the past achievement. The Lord has helped us thus far, but there's yet much land to be possessed. Therefore, we need to pray for greater usefulness. Pray that God will use me more. We need to pray for greater fruitfulness. You need to also pray for greater faithfulness in the service of the Lord. Let's call upon God and pray. And God is listening to us, is hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are still praying. The Lord sent Jonah and Aaron to the Ninevites to preach to them. But at first, he ran away. He rejected the message of God. Therefore, we must not be a runaway Jonah. We want to pray that, Lord, I will not be carnal. I will not be rebellious. I will not be stubborn when you call me to your service to reach the, the dying world around you and beyond you with the gospel message. Let's call upon God and pray. There's much to be done out there. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Also, we need to call upon God. This version of the GCK is coming up in Zambia, Lusaka in particular. It's starting on the 21st to 26th of September 2023. Therefore, we need to lift up our Father in the Lord that God Almighty will wear him with his power, with his anointing. He will lift him to greater heights, greater level of manifestation of power and faith, that there will be greater harvest of soul in the Alpha location and all other locations that are connected across the globe. Let's call upon God and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Almighty God, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name for the privilege that we have to serve you. Not many mighty, not many noble are called, but you have called us to yourself. I pray will we accept, will not reject this calling, and with all our hearts, we will do your bidding in reaching out to the unsaved souls in Jesus' name. As a church, I pray that you help us not to rest on our oars, not to believe that we have reached a lot of people. There are still billions and billions yet unreached. Help us, Lord, to get it done at the right time. Thank you because you have answered us. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, if you are there, I said, praise the Lord. Wonderful to be together tonight. Are you happy you're here tonight? And yes. those who are coming for the first time, I welcome you afresh again in Jesus' name. Yes. And we pray that the Bible study tonight will enrich every life. Yes. Empower everyone. Yes. Make you excited to serve the Lord. Yes. I pray the revelation of the word will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Yes. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you because this is the backbone of the church and the backbone of the Christian. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you enlighten everyone, edify everyone, put something within everyone that will make us excited in living for you in Jesus' name. I will pray it will not be a dull time, a dull fellowship. It will be an exciting fellowship in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless all of us who are here. Our fathers, our mothers, our pastors, our leaders, our ministers, our workers, all the members, all the invitees, our youths, our children. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep us awake and help us, Lord, to learn everything you have for us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You must give me another amen before sitting down. Amen. God bless you. We're coming to gospel according to St. John, chapter 17. Of all the chapters, St. John, of all the chapters in the New Testament, this chapter is very peculiar. This chapter is very special and unique. Why? Because this records the prayer of Jesus Christ. And it is so deep, it's so rich, it's so solemn, it's so sacred that when people read the prayer, they, they are getting into what the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is speaking to the Heavenly Father. And it's like uh, we're listening to Him and we're watching Him as He talks to the Heavenly Father. He talks about Himself. He talks about the Father, he talks about the disciples, and he talks about the need of the world. He brings everything together in this prayer. And it's like uh, we're kneeling down, and then we're listening to him, Jesus Christ, talking to the Father. Look at what I'm talking about. It's in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Stop there for a moment. It was here on earth. 
he was about to go to heaven and heaven had been on his heart on his mind every time and all these disciples he got them converted and he got them transformed and he lifted up their minds to heaven and he was the one if you remember that taught the disciples when you pray say our father where a father which art in heaven and he spoke to everyone saying that God was his father and when he rose from the dead he said I go to my father I go to your father I go to my God I go to your God and he makes God so near and he makes God so precious and he gives us the relationship between sons and father and he the unique son of God the only begotten son of God is now talking to the father and as you see the solemnity you see the sacredness you see the prayer it shows you to how to approach the heavenly father now now that you are born again, you are a child of God, it shows you how you too can approach the Heavenly Father. But look at this, I'm reading from verse 1 again, it says, These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And then he said, Father, he said, Father, and there's no one that knew the Father like Jesus. No one knew God like Jesus. And to anyone that he will reveal the Father to, he says, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. And so you see what we're reading about in uh, John chapter 17 is the prayer, the solemn prayer, the secret prayer, the supernatural prayer of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, unto the heavenly Father. Christ's prayer was to God, to the heavenly Father. Not only that, in this prayer that is recorded, he spoke about the Father, he spoke about the Son, he spoke about the church, he spoke about the world, and then he gave the reason why he's praying this prayer. I've titled the message tonight from verse 1 to verse 12, Christ's I priestly prayer for all his disciples. Christ's high priestly prayer for all his disciples. What does that mean? He was praying as a high priest. As a high priest of a profession. He was praying as the one that was going to make the final sacrifice. And that sacrifice he'll present to the heavenly father. And then he prays for the people who were already partakers of his salvation. And those who will be partakers of the salvation. Look at verse 9. So you understand what we are talking about? That this is the prayer he prayed for his own disciples who already were saved, who already were following him, who already were disciples, who already had their sins forgiven, and he had given them the power and the grace to go and sin no more. Look at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Maybe that was surprise someone there he prayed for the disciples in particular he prayed for us believers in particular in this chapter 17 at the end when he'll be on the cross he's going to pray for the world forgive them for they know not what they do but here he's praying for the church he's praying for you I said he's praying for us he says I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine they are thine they do not belong to the world these were children of God already were saved already and their names were written in heaven but it's not only that look at verse 20 as we read verse 20 it says neither pray I for these alone it says my prayer it's not limited to these initial disciples. It's not limited to these initial followers. It's not limited to these who are just following me. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also. Here is where I'm included. I said here is why I am included. It says, for them also which shall believe on me through their word. The people that shall believe. How oh, did you believe? You read the gospel according to St. John and you believe. And you had the message maybe from Matthew and you believe. You had the message somebody was preaching on Acts of the Apostles and you believe. Or maybe somebody was preaching through Romans. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. That if you believe in your heart and you 
confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and then you believe for righteousness and salvation thou shalt be saved and then you believe Jesus said I'm praying for my own disciples not only that I'm praying for all the other disciples all the other followers that will believe through their word and that's why this prayer includes you includes me look at the disciple the disciples had heard him when he prayed that's why they recorded it down he called God father and he called himself son the prayer emphasizes the deep relationship between Christ the son and God the father in fact as you think about Jesus Christ talking about the father and himself talking about himself as son you find that reveal come to John chapter 1 John chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 18 John chapter 1 verse 18 and see how familiarly he speaks about the father the son and the father it tells us in John chapter 1 verse 18 it says no man has seen God at any time the only begotten son it says this is the one that can reveal the father like no other person can the only begotten son which is in heaven which is in the bosom of the father he has declared him you see that he talks about god as father and he talks about himself as son you're going to find that throughout the gospel according to saint john because this was the relationship he kept with the father and this relationship had begun even before the world began because he is the everlasting father and he is the eternal son and when you bring both together you have him eternal everlasting father and then you have jesus christ the everlasting son i'm coming to john chapter 3 verse 34 john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 34 it says in verse 34 for he whom god as saint speaketh the words of god and then it says for god giveth him not the spirit by measure he giveth not the spirit by measure unto him look at this it says the father loveth who the son is always making it's always declaring to the people you need to understand the relationship between god and christ he is the son and then god is the father the father loves the son and has given how many things all things unto his son is giving him everything that he is the son has total authority as final authority as complete authority and the father has complete love and authority as well we're coming to john chapter 5 john chapter 5 god is father and jesus christ is son god is the eternal father and uh, jesus is the everlasting son we're coming to john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 john chapter 5 verse 19 it says uh, then answered jesus and said unto them verily verily i say unto you that the son can do nothing of himself he chooses to be so subservient to the father and to be so united with the father and to be so much under the control of the father that he decided when he came to earth even though he has been eternal himself everlasting himself yet when he came to the earth he made himself of no reputation and it says here the son can do nothing of himself but watch he sees the father do that is what he himself uh, does and then he says whatsoever the father does that's what the son also does and so you see that relationship between the father and the son that he will do nothing except what the father will approve of he'll do nothing except what the father will instruct to do he'll do nothing except what the father will allow him to do and it's so important because when you come to john chapter 17 and then you see the prayer and you read the prayer and you learn from the revelation of what jesus christ 
Christ was saved. You will see the emphasis on the Father. You see the emphasis on the Son. And you see the revelation of the relationship between the Father and the Son. You see the love. You see the unity. You'll see the obedience of the Son to the Father. And you see the authority of the Father over the Son. And now we come to chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 13. Chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. Again, he emphasizes the fact that God is Father and He is the Son. He says, Whatever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. We're coming back now to the beginning of uh, chapter 17. In chapter 17, uh, as we look at this Christ high priestly prayer for all his disciples and in this uh, prayer we're reading as said from chapter 17 uh, verse 1 to verse 12 there are three things we're looking at today number one the prayer of the son before his father the prayer of the son that's the prayer of christ the son of god the son of man the one who died for us on the cross of calvary the prayer of the son before his father point number two the proof of the salvation of his followers there are many people that do not understand that jesus christ actually gives salvation give forgiveness, give redemption to those uh, followers while he was still here on earth. But the Bible makes it very clear. You are going to see from the prayer of Jesus from what he was telling the Father concerning these disciples that they were saved and they were real children of God. Point number two, the proof of the salvation of his followers. Point number three, the protection through the Son by the Father. The protection of those believers the protection of those followers, the protection of the children of God, the protection of the people that know the Lord, the protection through the Son by the Father. I come to point number one. Point number one, the prayer of the Son before the Father. We're coming to chapter 17. Chapter 17, and I'm reading again from verse 1 all through to verse 5. The prayer Christ prayed. The prayer the Son of God prayed. The prayer our Savior prayed unto the Father. Here is the beginning. He says uh, these words speak uh, Jesus. And he lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. You see the prayer was prayed here. He wanted glory from the Father appreciation from the father exaltation from the father according to the covenant they are together the father and the son that the glory will come from the father and it will come upon the son it says as thou art saint as thou as given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him he said this is the covenant you made with me and this is the promise you give me that all those you give me i will give eternal life unto them in verse 3 and it says and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god it says this is what my disciples have known they know that you are the only true god they're not going to serve any other god and they know that you have sent me and they have eternal life and it says this is life abundant life this is life eternal life this is life everlasting life that they might know thee as the true god and jesus christ whom thou hast said you have sent me and they know that already it says in verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do his mind was always on that work that the father had given him to do and he said father i concentrated on it i focused on it and i finished the work that you gave me to do and now oh father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which i had with thee before the foundation 
of the world before the beginning of the world and so you see that prayer the prayer of the son before the father and uh, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he prayed to the father we're coming to john chapter 11 and see that that was the sabbath when he was talking to the father he looked to heaven and he looked to the father and he prayed having the assurance that whatever he prayed that the father always answered him look at chapter 11 reading from verse 41 then he took away the stone tonight you'll take away that stone and whatever hinders answers to prayer you'll take it away tonight in jesus name and when you do when you do god will answer our prayer and he rolled everything the way out of your life in Jesus' name. And then it says, it says they rolled away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, tell me the word, Father. He lifted up his eyes and then he was going to pray to the Father. He was going to ask that dead Lazarus will come forth. And so he said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me he has not he had not even made the request he had not even made the prayer and he said i thank you father because that was hurt me before we pray we know because god is faithful because god is love because god can do all things we know already he has answered us he has answered me tonight and he has answered jesus on your behalf tonight in jesus name and I knew that thou hearest me always. How often did the Father hear the Son? How often did the Father answer the Son? And if the Son is praying for you tonight, if Jesus, your Savior, your Lord is praying for you tonight, will he be answered? Of course, it's going to be answered because he says, and I know, I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stood by, I said it uh, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. But the point is, he lifted up his eyes and then he called to the father. And he was going to ask the father for Lazarus to come forth. After he had said that, he said, Lazarus, come forth. What happened? He came forth like you are going to come forth tonight. The power of God is always activated when the Son prays, when the Son talks to the Heavenly Father. We're looking at John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 23. And it says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. The hour is come. And that's what he was seen in chapter 17 he said now this is the hour father glorify your son and the same thing he told them here he said the hour has come isn't it wonderful for you to know when your hour actually comes when the hour for answered prayer when it comes when the hour to achieve something when it comes when the hour to get something done when it comes when the hour the hour of accomplishment and the hour of breakthrough and the hour of the will of god and the hour of whatever god has uh, decided he will do or then they will do that we know the hour has come. In the case of Jesus, he knew the hour. If you read your Bible very well, there are times they told him to do something. He'll say, no, my hour has not come. The mother will say, how about doing this? My hour has not come. And then the brothers will say, how about going to Jerusalem at this time of the field? He said, my hour has not come. But now at this time, he knew that his hour has come. The hour of doing the will of God and the hour of finalizing the redemptive work that the Father had given him to do, had sent him to do here on earth. And it's good for you when your hour comes and you know that this is your hour. I'm reading from John chapter 13 and I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 13 verse 1. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew 
See that when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should uh, depart out of the world unto, unto the Father. He knew when the hour came, the hour that he should leave the earth and then go to the Father, having loved the Son which were in the world, he loved them even until the end. And I say, including us, he will love you to the end. It says, having loved the soul, which were in the world, he loved them to the end. We're looking at verse 31, verse 31 of that chapter 13. It says, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Now, the Son of Man is glorified. And God, the Father, is glorified in him. And it says, if God be glorified in him, then shall God also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. He said, there's not going to be any delay. That's why he prayed in chapter 17. And he said, Father, glorify thy son with thine own self as you promised me before. Where was that promise? How did he know that the Father will glorify him? And what kind of glory was the Father going to show unto the Son? We're coming to some two. In some two, I'm reading from verse 6. Some two, we're reading from verse 6. So you will see what the Father had said about the Son. And what the Father was going to do concerning you know, the Son. And what the Father was going to give unto the Son. Was going to actually give the world to be redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus said, Christ said now the hour has come he was about to go to the cross of Calvary he was about to be the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb, he was about to make the atonement for the sins of the whole world, that's why he said now the hour has come and then the work will be totally finished come to some two and I'm reading from verse 6, it says yet have I said my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the Father talking about the Son. That's God talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Almighty talking about the Messiah that I have set him upon my holy hill of Zion and he'll be king. Look at this. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, thou art my, tell me, Old Testament, Old Testament, thou art my son. You see, being the son of God is not something, it's not an afterthought. It's not like, you know, okay, Jesus called himself son of God, son of God, son of man, son of man. And since he called himself son of God, son of man, so okay, God eventually agreed, okay, that's what you want to call yourself. Not at all. It had been already agreed in heaven. And here it says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. It's a decree of heaven. The Lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee and how is Christ to be glorified remember we're following through the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said glorify me with thine own self of the glory which I had with you before the world began look at verse 8 tell me verse 8 there Ask of me, ask of me. The Lord Jesus Christ actually has ownership of the whole world because he sacrificed to redeem the whole world. He says, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And then he says, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And so the uttermost part of the earth, I ever far away from Jerusalem where I are, here in Africa, here in that city, here in that country, the Lord has given everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, whosoever, anyone that believes any part of the world, they'll be saved and they'll be prepared for heaven in Jesus' name. How did Jesus Christ eventually have this glory? How did he have this inheritance? How did he have this that the Father had promised him? We're looking at Philippians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 5. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ. See what he did. 
see his sacrifice and see his submission and see the substitutionary death that he gave on the cross of Calvary and as a result of that that glory came that exaltation came and that approval from heaven came look at this in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 it says let this might be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God that he is he was equal with the father I and my father are one and it wasn't something was snatching it wasn't something he was uh, robbing or taking away from God without his consent he said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon him the form of his servant and he was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself you see what christ has done you see what christ did so that he could sacrifice his life for you for me for the world at calvary and then he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god has also tell me highly exalted him because of that which he did because he gave himself and because he voluntarily did that it says because of that god the father has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus tell me every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth and that every 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 tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father the glory of God the Father and so that's what Christ has done and what he has done is to sacrifice himself on the cross of Calvary that's why he said the hour has come is the hour of the final obedience at the cross of Calvary shedding his blood so that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved and if you have not been saved tonight is the night of your salvation and if you are saved already tonight, you appreciate the salvation the Lord has given you more than ever before. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 8. It says that thou hast put all things, all things in subjection under his feet. He has put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we see not yet all things under him look at that he said normally by promise normally by covenant everything is under the feet of the lord jesus christ and eventually we're going to see that because every tongue is going to confess that jesus is lord to the glory of the father but you see there's still some unbelievers that are outside they have not come under the control of christ that's why it says normally the father has given him everything he gives him authority and he's going to rule and he's going to reign over the whole universe but at present at the present day there are people who have not submitted themselves unto Christ they will come they be submissive to Christ it says in verse 9 but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death that is when he came to this world he only gave up his authority and his power but we see him now crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for how many people for every man that means that the death wish should have died the lord jesus christ has tasted that and now you can come and if you call upon the name of the lord you will be saved i thought you'll say amen 
I come into first John chapter 5, first John chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatsoever, whosoever, a boy, a girl, a young person, an older person, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Tell me. Even our faith, the one who does not overcome is because he doesn't have faith. He says, you know, the sins are too terrible and the defilements, they're so terrible and the temptation is so great, I cannot overcome because he says he cannot, he cannot, but I can. I said I can. I can do all things through Christ, so strengthens me. Every temptation you can overcome. Every trial you can overcome. Every sin you can overcome because whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Look at verse 5. Who is he? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. As you come to the Lord, say, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. You are the Son of God that sacrificed and gave yourself for me on the cross of Calvary. You are going to be saved, and then you will have the victory. I said you will have the victory. You know, Jesus Christ in his prayer was talking about eternal life. He said, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. Look at verse 13. Verse 13, these things have I reaching unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God. These things have I reaching unto you, that believe. I pray everyone here will believe. I said everyone here today will believe. It says these things have I reached unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that she have, what do you have? That she may know that she have, I said what do you have? Eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God of God. Come to verse 18 there. In verse 18, look at this. In verse 18, we know. Thank God I know. I said, thank God I know. You see, there's some people that do not know. They say, well, I don't know whether I'm, you know, an overcomer. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. I don't know whether I'm a child of God or not. You can know as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you have that revelation of the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart that you are now a child of God. That's why it says we know that whosoever, 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 ever who is whosoever anyone everyone as you believe we know that whosoever is born of god tell me tell me tell me say it again sin is not there are some people that say, you know, I cannot overcome sin. I cannot, uh, you know, deal without sinning. And then every Sunday they go to confess. We have done what we, have, we shouldn't have done. We have not done what we should have done. We are all sinners. No, we are not all sinners. There are some people that know God and they don't sin. I said there are some people that know God and they don't sin. They leave the same business alone because the life of Christ comes into them and the life of righteousness comes into them. That's why it says we know that whosoever, whosoever is born of God sinneth not and that he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And it says he so keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. I thought you'll say amen. amen. That wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. In the wicked one. And then he tells us in verse 20. Look at verse 20 here. And it says we know that the son of God is come. And he has given. He has given.